Hello and welcome back to Minecraft Feed the Bees and this episode we're going to be working on our house. That's right, we've built the lab, we've not put anything in there yet, but for the most part I would say it's complete. But what we've really neglected over the past few weeks is the house. This thing is huge, it's lovely, I can't wait to flesh it out. But the problem is it needs some furniture, it needs a bit of TLC. These windows just look so open and bare. Oh man, but what a view, look at that, mahogany meadows. That is an insane view. I should spend more time in my house, which is... Oh, hang on a sec. Looks like my, uh, my farm has stopped working. I'll have to diagnose that later. Usually it's a problem with the redstone. But uh, yeah. Anyway, so what we're going to do this episode is we're going to build a kitchen. And this is pretty exciting. It's, it sounds like it's pretty boring as a baseline. I mean, just... Renovating a house doesn't seem like it might be fun until you actually do it in real life when suddenly it actually becomes exciting. And building a kitchen <laughs> is also pretty cool. Uh, and that's what we're going to do this episode. So I've got this nice space. This was always going to be our kitchen because it's on the ground floor, not the basement. We could put the oven, the dishwasher, all of those things, the fridge, along these two back walls. And we can have this outside area here for seating. Perfect. Well, what do we need to start a kitchen? Well, it's an old mod that you might remember from a few series. Mostly, I think, uh, Feed the World 2 with Lewis. Uh, and we used a mod called Cooking for Blockheads. Well, guess what? Like 10 years later, that mod is still hanging around. And that's right, it is. If you type in at cooking, you get Cooking for Blockheads and you get all of these wonderful little tools. The way Cooking for Blockheads works is your entire kitchen becomes a multi-block machine and the pipes and wires that connect it together are the kitchen floor. So the first thing we need to do is pick a colour scheme for our floor. Now I'm thinking, oh, do we think pink, green, yellow? Well, traditionally, my colour has always been orange, so I think I'm going to go with orange here, which means we need some orange dye and some kitchen floor. And kitchen floor is as simple as mixing coal and quartz. So let's see if we've got those things. I'd like to thank Beefy G, Beefy underscore G, for his comment. Uh, he says, hey, Stin, your backpack can be upgraded fairly cheaply to the diamond backpack. And that backpack can have add-ons and modules that let you automate certain things. Well, let's take a look at what he's saying. So if I press V, I've got my backpack. I'm going to empty this backpack because um, I don't want to lose anything when I upgrade it. Let's just put my stuff into the computer here. Last episode, you'll remember that we made the obsidian bee. Well, I made another obsidian bee. Now we have two, and we can start working on the bees. Probably next episode, we're going to do a complete overhaul of the bee pods. Oh no! We've hit maximum capacity. We are 100% full on items. Oh no. Well, I'll put this back in my backpack. Now, we do need more storage in our computer, but for the time being, one thing we can do is get rid of some of this stuff that we don't actually want. Like dirt. What we can do is we can compress the dirt, and we can also compress the cobblestone. Yeah, that dropped us by 9%. Is there anything else we can compress in here? We've got so much lavender. I just want to trash the lavender, actually. Yeah, let's get some of this lavender out. Open up the trash can, and in you go. We've also got 1.6k Sugarcane. I'm not going to throw that away because it is kind of valuable, but we'll just leave it there for now. Lots of deep slate as well, yeah, but that's been useful for building the lab. The reason why I stopped building the lab, actually, I think I mentioned this before, is the fact that I've ran out of uh, marble. So I'll have to come back when I gather some more to finish up the lab. So there's only really one way to get more quartz, and that's to go into the nether. But let's not get too distracted now. We're going to work on the backpack. Well, let's try... Uh, where is my green backpack? I put it somewhere. Okay, so bye-bye old backpack. Welcome new backpack. Where was it? Backpack. Here it is. Press left shift to view contents. So what does that mean? I have to actually go here, drag it to my bar, and then hold left shift. Oh, I put it on the floor. That looks pretty cool, though. I didn't know you could place it. So Sophisticated Backpacks says there is an open backpack button. Let's try putting that to V, like the other one. Wow, there's a lot of buttons here, but we're just going to stick with open backpack and put that to number pad 7. 
done. Number pad seven. Ah, oh, bones. There's a load of bones in here. Why are there bones in my backpack? So can I open my backpack while I've got it on? Yes, I can. Boom, backpack. Now let's upgrade this sophisticated backpack into a diamond one. Or you can even go as high as netherite. Whoa, hang on a s- Ooh, that's expensive. I haven't got that many diamonds. I've only got ten. Ten diamonds means perhaps this is not the way we're going to be going forwards. However, I do still like the idea of upgrading that, so we'll come back to it later. Thank you for the tip though, beefy G. So speaking of diamonds, why have we got so few? We have a massive quarry, which reminds me, the quarry part two might have done its duty. Wait. I think I have another window open, hang on. No, I don't, weird. Um, so yeah, we've got the second quarry here. I'm gonna slip on my jetpack. Oh, I don't need to, I've still got it on. Go to regular mode and oh, look at this. We have indeed got ourselves some more all the modium ore. So I've been thinking, why haven't we got that many diamonds? Uh, you guys have probably said it in the comment section. However, I might have recorded this before that has gone out. And if that's the case, what's probably happened is, and I think you guys are probably right if you said it, the quarry hasn't gone low enough to get diamonds. And that's evidenced by this other trench that was dug when we had the quarry configured incorrectly. If you look here, the trench there goes much, much deeper. And I reckon the quarry just didn't get down low enough to get diamonds. So how can we fix that? Well, if we go in here, check the coordinates. At the moment, the dimensions for the, for the uh, top to bottom are 120. Let's try increasing that to 180. 180. Boom. Like a darts jackpot. Yeah, it's going again. Perfect. And now I think this is going to go down to bedrock and hopefully get us some diamonds. While it's doing that, let's go and grab up this all the modium ore. Lovely stuff. Even more this time. Not as much as the other quarry, but it's still a healthy amount. And we are fast getting to the point now where we can basically get as much of this as we want which means we can start building some crazy recipes. Whoosh. Oh, now the last thing you want to do is run out of jetpack fuel when you're this high up, because that is that is the curtain call, isn't it? All right, all right. Well, it looks like uh, no more diamonds have come down the pipe. In fact, which box are these going into? Ooh. Yeah, we've, ooh, we've got a lot of stuff. A lot, a lot of stuff. Now let's get all of the coal that we can and turn that into blocks, for one. Just condense that stuff. Oh, we don't actually have a uh, crafting bench out here. We do have, however, a backpack. Boom. So we're going to leave the quarry to do these last few layers, and fingers crossed we'll find some diamonds in these lower levels. Otherwise, it might just be that diamonds are very uncommon in this dimension, and that could be true. What the hell was that? That was that was in Minecraft. When I crouched. Wait a minute. What's... What's... What's going on? What's... Oh, hang on. Hang on a... Of course. Of course. It's a whoopee cushion. Of course. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to build the kitchen. We've messed around, we looked at backpacks, whatever, but you know, there's only one thing to do now, and that's build the kitchen. So let's build as many kitchen blocks as we can. 12, 24. 36? I think 48 will definitely be enough, actually. I don't think we need to go to the nether quartz. Perfect. So we've got the kitchen floor. What else are we looking for? We had a cooking table, obviously. That needs a crafting book. Any old stone and some terracotta. Oh, what's this? Yeah, I remember this being expensive. So you do need diamonds and some and some expensive ores to make a cooking for Blockhead's kitchen. And that's why we've waited so long before we actually made our kitchen. Because just like in real life, 
kitchens are really freaking expensive. So do we have a book and can we cook it? Oh man, it's something, there's something very therapeutic about cooking the books. Reminds me of boom, cooking for blockheads. We'll take that. Now let's make, uh, make ourselves a cooking table. Oh yeah. There's a lot of really cool blocks in cooking for blockheads. Oh, we need uh, some crafting benches now. Where, where the wood at? Boom, boom. Cooking for Blockhead's book. Cooking table. Bam! Oh, yeah. Now, let's quickly check our inventory because there might be quests. There might be quests for Cooking for Blockheads. Oh, man. There's not actually that many crap quests. You've got tips and tricks. That's cool and everything. Building gadgets is something I might look at because these uh, these look pretty cool. A building gadget, an exchanging gadget, a copy and paste gadget, and a destruction gadget. However, if I remember rightly, oh no, that's that's pretty cheap to make as well. But yeah, most of the quests aren't for the kind of incidental mods, like the little kind of quality of life things. They're all for like the big tech, like create, industrial foregoing, all for magic, astral sorcery. So I'll tell you what, actually, I think we're probably going to have to go down all of these quest lines. And pedestals is a real confusing one because, oh my god. I took a look at this mod. It's very, very powerful, but it's also very, very confusing. Anyway, back to kitchens. There are no quests for kitchens, so let's just get to it. We've got a cooking table. We'll, of course, need an oven. We'll need iron ingots and some... It's got to be black stained glass. Do I have black dye? I must. There we go. So I can make the stained glass. But I do need iron ingots. Luckily enough for me, I loaded up the, uh, the processing facility earlier with some iron ore. And there it is. Boom. 29 will do, but I'll take the full stack. In you go, compadre. So I think we have all the bits and bobs now to make an oven. Perfect, that's number two. Cooking table, kitchen floor, oven. Next on the list. Oh, the powerhouse, the sink. So amazing, it can be used to cool a nuclear reactor. Man, honestly, if they used Minecraft technology in real life, people would save so much money. They have all these expensive cooling systems in nuclear power stations. Turns out all they really need is a kitchen sink. A tool rack. Now, we're going to need tool racks. So a couple of these should be the business. And we'll make three for good measure. Just to be sure. A toaster. Ooh. Now, these recipes, they're not hard. We've got all the things for them. It's just they're a little bit tricky. Iron trap door, stone button. Tell you what, I'm going to touch base with you guys again once I've made some of these more incidental things. Hey, presto, a toaster. Spice racks, of course. Okay, welcome back, and I be- What the hell is- Oh, it got dark. Oh, no! <laughs> Let's get him. It's been a while since I killed anything. And so long, Wraith. You suck. Oh, he's coming in for the kill. But we're gonna get him before he gets us. Wait, what's this? Oh, little zombie, little zombie shit. There we go. Rest in peace, mother trucker. Woo. So, like I said, we've created all of the blocks that we need, except one. The elusive cow in a jar. To make a cow in a jar, well, it's a very simple recipe. You put a cow on top of a jar and you drop an anvil on him. It's, it's a weird, it's a weird way of doing it, but it's a very cool one. So, to do that, we need, uh, ooh, milk jars. And to do that, we're going to need milk buckets. So let's get some buckets, go to the wilderness, and milk some of these bad boys. Yeah, if I can manage it, I want to get like about four cows in the jar, just because the rate at which they make milk is very, very slow. But if we get four of them, that's four times the speed. Sounds good to me. I thought about making a milking factory, but I think we'll save that for later. It's a cool idea, but uh, for now, we're just going to get some cows in the jar for the kitchen. It's so useful having like a waystone that just takes us to the wilderness. Like someplace super far out where there happen to be cows. 
Also, because of the way chunks are loaded and unloaded, basically every time we leave this place, it likes it's like it stops it stop existing and time just doesn't move. Now, I had no idea, but you can milk a cow for a, one single cow has a oh, wait, hang on a sec. Every time you milk a cow, he loses some life. I I did not know that. This guy's almost dead from milking. I wonder if you can kill a cow from milking him to death. Well, let's have a drink and find out. Yeah, no, you, you can't milk a cow to death. They are just infinite milk machines. Is that true? Is that how it actually is supposed to work? Honey home. I was sure I remember cows not, not being able to be infinitely milked, but maybe, maybe things have changed. Times change, and so do we. So we've got some milk buckets. Let's make some milk jars. Boom. I could make six. Six cows in a jar. That'd be pretty cool. Milk jars. So we've got six milk jars. One anvil. Four pieces of wheat. Let's put the buckets and stuff back into the computer and go and get ourselves some cows in a jar. Yeehaw. Time to rope some steers. Have a glug of honey and let's go. Back to the wilderness. Oh yeah, well we're about to reduce the cow population of the wilderness by six. That's you got that's right. That's right. Six six cows are coming home with us tonight, you lucky sons of guns. The way we're gonna get these cows is uh through trickery. So let's clear a s no, we're not gonna clear a space. Let's dig a hole. Put down a jar. Build some framework so I can get the cow to go, oops, underneath here. Put the anvil against this, it'll fall down and get the cow. And we get him over here with the wheat. So here we go. This is the master plan. Hello, Mr. Cow. Oh, that's right. I've got some wheat just for you. This special treat just for you, my friend. Okay, there he is. He's, he's on, top of, on top of the jar. Oh, <laughs> it worked. Perfect. Now we dig it up, and let's go again. Where my cows at? Where my cows at? Okay, boom. We've got a brown one. Let's get a white one now. I don't know what, I don't know what the difference is. Oh, he just got pricked. Come here. Wait, is he gonna, he's gonna kill- Oh my- Oh, you stupid cow! Oh, you stupid cow! It's like being on EastEnders. Here we go. Well, we, we'll get a brown one. I think the black and white ones are very stupid. So the brown ones, they're the smart ones. That's where the smart money is. Wait, hang on a sec. Go away, sheep. I can't put I can't put a sheep in a jar, can I? Let's just oh, let's just poke you in there. Come on, cow. Get in the hole. He's in the hole. Hey, boom, number two. Uh, where's the last cow? The final cow. The lucky customer that's going to join us back on the farm. Eternally trapped inside a jar. Here we go. Hello, Chief Beef. Plonk your caboose over here. Now, in you go. Yep, he's in. Boom! And that's it. The sixth cow in a jar. Let's take these home. Now, it all starts with the kitchen floor. The kitchen floor is what connects all of your multi-block kitchens together. Now, you don't need a kitchen floor. If you have all of your cabinets in a row, that also counts as them touching. And so it's still a multi-block kitchen. However, if you use kitchen floor, you get to split your kitchen into two. It's pretty cool. Also, I like the look of the kitchen floor, so we're going to do that. Oh, although I did almost forget we need to dye our kitchen floor so it's orange. Very important. Very, very important. So first up, let's put down the floor. I'm not sure we really need to put the floor around the very edge of the kitchen, but I'm going to anyway, because I think it'll look nice and neat. Okay, so down goes the kitchen floor. You always need more than you think when you're putting down floor, like floorboards or kitchen floors. It's always better to make too many than not have enough. So the important parts first, the edges. And now fill it in. Yeah, close call. We only had eight kitchen floor left. Okay, and now it's time to put down some of the bits and bobs for the kitchen. So if we go into our backpack, we can get the important bits out. 
So the first big thing is the cooker, of course, the oven. There we go. Looking good to me. And then I think we're going to have the fridge be a standalone object here. Oh, no, wait. Now, can we put two fridges on top of each other? That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, I like the idea of like a multi-block kind of two-story fridge, just like in real life. Oh, you can! And it even recognizes that you've done that and makes it like a double door. That's very cool. I like that a lot. Okay. So let's put down some more kitchen counters. Now, these things are pretty important. These are what connect everything together. We only make two. So we're going to need to make some more, actually. We're going to need to make a lot, of more, a lot more of those. Oh, we left the fridge door open. Mum's going to kill us. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. Right, so let's put down some kitchen counters. Now, these go along the back of the wall, like this. And they kind of connect everything up. It's pretty cool. One, two, three, and then we put the corner counter. Where's the corner? Oh, wait, no, no, look, there, kitchen corner. We just haven't built one. Well, let's go do that. Oh, it's getting late, though. Let's have a sleep. Man, I'm sleeping in my own bed for the first time in many, many episodes. So we should only need two kitchen corners. Let's put those in place. Because the way I want to do it is I want to have, like, the kitchen stop here and have, like, a separating wall that comes along here, just so that it'll make the kitchen look nicer, I think. So, boom, goes the kitchen corner. And another, oh, no, that's the wrong way. Bad kitchen corner. No, oh, you need to face the other way, kitchen corner. Maybe a, a counter will help it. There we go, finally. Now, I also want to have uh, some cupboards above the kitchen. So, the question remains, how do we get some cupboards along the top that we can connect to the kitchen. We'll get rid of these torches for one. We can do some lights in a second. But if I put a bunch of kitchen cabinets above, is that going to work? I like the idea of one being here and a few being here. There we go. That looks like it's all connected up. Let's put a cooking table in because there's a way we can test this. Basically, the cooking table will look for food that we've got in our entire multi-block kitchen. And it'll tell us what it can find. Bread. So at the moment, we can make bread because I have wheat on me. But if I throw that wheat away, it doesn't say bread anymore. So what we'll do is we'll put some bread up in a kitchen cabinet here. Give that a quick test. Whoa! It, it can detect it. So this works. This all works. That's perfect. So, we've got the kitchen down. This was only half of the expense, though. As you know, when you're building a kitchen in real life, this is the real problem, too. So you think you spent all your money on kitchen cabinets, kitchen counters, a table, a fridge, and an oven. You think you're done? Think again, pal. You're going to need some tools. You need some frying pans some plates, some glasses, all of the utensils. Uh, and that's going to cost a lot too. So it's time to, to whip out your pocketbook and spend some more cashola. What even is a pocketbook anyway? Like a book that you keep in your pocket? How can you pay money with a book? So what we're going to do is we're going to look for kitchen utensils. Now the kitchen utensils are not... Wait, what's this? There are upgrades for the fridge? Oh man, now we're getting even into, into, into even more expense. This fridge freezer has an ice maker. And a screen on the front of the door that lets you see inside and see what's inside the fridge. So you don't have to keep opening it. So let's see. A heating unit, which is basically an oven upgrade, allows to heat an oven using energy. Perfect. We, don't, we no longer need coal. We can just use our power system. So we're definitely going to make one of those. The heating unit is a no-brainer. The ice unit, well, we need snowballs. Oh my god, how do you make snowballs? Do we, we just dig snow, don't we? I thought we just dug snow. And the preservation chamber, we can make one of those for sure. Now, where is the closest snow? This is the wilderness. There's some snow near to the wilderness, so we're just going to go to the wilderness. 
Okay, now it's a bit further than I anticipated, but still, we can already see it. There it is, the snow. Yeah, there we go. A wooden shovel on the snow gets us some snowballs. Boom, ice upgrade, ice unit, there we go, just like G unit, boom. Oh, of course, we missed the sink as well, we're missing a sink. And there's so much to do with the kitchen. Okay, where are we going to put the sink? I think, uh, we could put it over here, actually, around the edge. Yeah, I like the idea of that. Boom, down goes the sink. And now let's put some upgrades in. So how do we upgrade the fridge? Ice unit. Fridge upgrade. Oh, just a right click on the fridge with the ice unit in hand means it's upgraded. So that probably means the same for the heating unit. Perfect, and we get this red dot on the, on the oven. And preservation chamber. Ding, ding, ding. Oh yeah, a fully upgraded kitchen. Man, all the, all the, all the mod cons. No expense spared. So what is that left in our in our backpack? The toaster, of course. Where are we going to put our toaster? I'm, I'm, I'm fond of putting toasters in the corner. I think they, they look good in the corner of a kitchen. Perfect. And a toaster's great because having this lets us just make things like toasted bread very quickly in the, in the kitchen. Just like in real life, actually. Toasters are great in your kitchen because you can make toast with them. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And already, boom, look, we've got so many recipes just off the bat that we can start making. Aha, uh -huh. but here we go. This is where we have a problem. If there's an icon in the bottom right of the recipe, it means we don't have the tool we need to get started. Okay, and so now it's time to start thinking about tools. So if we go to at Pam, and Pam's Harvest Craft has all of the tools that we're going to need. And there's a lot of these things. It's bakeware, cutting board, juicer, all of that juice. And we're going to need one of each, I believe. And I believe that's all the tools we need. We've got every single one that Pam's Harvest Craft has. And I think that that's okay. I seem to remember some recipes needing two tools. But maybe I'm wrong. So where are we going to put our tools? Well, there's a number of places you can put them. You can put them inside the oven. For example, bakeware can go here on the left, as well as a pot. The saucepan, and of course the skillet. And now, yeah, as you can see, they're resting on the cooker, and you know you're good to go. But for the other things, like the cutting board, I believe the cutting board is something we can put down flat on a counter. So let's do that. Yeah, there it is. Looks amazing. Oh, I love this mod. I love this mod so much. Cooking for Blockheads and Pam's Harvest Craft, two of my favorite mods in the game. Next up, a roller. Now, I'm not quite sure where the roller goes. This is a new one for me. I can't put it on a kitchen counter. Maybe this is why we have a tool rack. So we're going to build a tool rack. We're going to put it up here, nice and high, so it looks good. And the roller goes in the tool rack. Perfect. What else we got here? A mixing bowl. Does the mixing bowl go on the counter? No. So again, I guess we put it up here on the tool rack. And all that's left is the juicer. Again, the juicer does not go on the counter. So we're going to make another tool rack and put it up there. And hey presto, we have a fully stocked kitchen. So now we've got all the tools. Let's click on the cooking table and see what we can make. Ooh, again. Wait, can we actually make less? Oh, well, we can make less because I've got less, basically. So there's just one final thing for us to do, and that's to put down our cows in jars. I said to you before that we were going to have a kitchen island, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to build some corner counters and put a kitchen island this side of the kitchen, and on that island we're going to have all of our cows in jars with all of the milk. We're going to put one here, here, and here then here, here, and here. And this is gonna be our little island in the middle of the kitchen. And I love the way this looks. Now I wish there wasn't ones with these uh, brown bits at the back because it looks like it's like should be against the wall. Oh, but the kitchen counter is dyeable. Do we have any dyes on us? Let's try this. So bone meal becomes white dye. And let's try right clicking on one of these counters to dye it. Oh yeah, look at this. We can make our kitchen its own unique color. Interesting. Okay, very cool. Well, what color are we going to do? Obviously, we're going to have a dark brown because this is going to be a mahogany kitchen. 
for sure. Let's put these cows in jars on the table. Oh yeah, cows in jars. Milk factory, baby. And as you can see, this is storing, well, it's very slow. These, these guys make milk very, very slow. So let's take a look at what the brown dye looks like. Oh yeah, perfect. Look at that dark brown mahogany finish. That's amazing. Perfect. Look at this kitchen. It's a beautiful kitchen. And the finishing touch is going to be a fruit bowl. Oh, and the pièce de résistance, the grinder, which of course is going to go in the final space on the tool rack. Well, thank you for watching Minecraft modded all the bees. This episode, we built a kitchen fully fleshed out and now we're ready to go. Basically, what we can do now is pull all of our foods. We're going to get them all, put them in the kitchen, make as many foods as we can and get as many heart increases as we can as well. All of the honeycombs, all of the fruits, vegetables, wheat, sugar, it's all going to go in here and we're going to make loads and loads of amazing food. Thank you for watching. Hit like and subscribe. A big thank you to everybody that's chosen to become a member. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. And until next time, take care.